Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Angela's Crest. Uh, this should be really, really neat. Uh, we're back with Marco, uh, the owner of that beautiful 914-6 conversion, uh, and with, with your other car, which has an equal, that car you took to prom, which is a great story. Yeah. This car has an equally good story, because you said it was your mom's car. Yeah, my dad wanted to build a car, and so uh, in order to get around my mom saying no, he's like, oh, I'm gonna build you a car. Build you a car. And then when it was done, she goes, where's my car? <laughs> so he had to give it up. Oh, man. Pretty so funny. this is a 1975 uh, 911 Carrera. Correct. That you have turbocharged. Yes, when my dad initially built it, he put a three liter non -air, uh, three liter non air cooled turbo in it, and my mom wore it out. And then we put a naturally aspirated motor in it until I got it, and I put a turbo motor back in it. So is this the Turbo Carrera motor, or is it an aftermarket turbo? No, uh, it's all factory parts. Okay. So, but I took a three liter, I made it a three two, and I left it stock boost, non intercooled, factory turbo wing, headers, and uh, sort of a hooligan pipe. So it's not a Turbo Carrera, because that would have been Porsche's car. This Correct. is a Carrera Turbo. Correct. I'm so about this. This is a fun car. So how much power, give or take, does this motor make? I want to say low threes. Low three, three, 310, 350. At the tires. At the, at the wheels. And this probably weighs 2,700 pounds, maybe? Less. 24. Oh, really? 24, 25. Great. Yeah. And uh, I'm very excited. 915 gearbox, five speed. Mm -hmm. Road is clear. European gearbox. It's got long gears. Okay. A limited slip and an oil cooler. Great. Power. Uh, between four and six, we don't bang off the limiter at 6500, so you can't hurt it. <laughs> uh, here we go. Now, the last time I drove something similar to this, do you know Derek Whitaker? He's That's why I wanted you to drive this car. We're going to get hot. But Derek's car was glorious, and, uh, and uh, it rained. Yeah. And we had to help the guy out of a ditch. <laughs> So uh, this is kind of a similar setup, yeah? Yeah, I think this car's a little more tractable than Derek's. It doesn't make as much power, but being that it's based on factory stuff as opposed to like aftermarket fuel injection and whatnot, I think the car is more tractable. This thing just feels, it, it wants to go, it wants to yeah. drive out from underneath me. And I haven't even, like, I'm used to a quarter throttle, I just, it feels like it's, it's real eager to go. It wants to go fast. So this is my first vintage 911 since I became an owner. Congratulations. I'm now in the club. <laughs> and um, this car feels a little lighter than mine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it sounds so nice. Come on, Farrah. I'm sorry. There's, uh, with the placement of this steering wheel, I'm having trouble bending my leg to heel toe properly. Oh, you don't like that big wheel? It's slightly different from mine. I just can't get my knee under there the right way. And these seats are a little different from mine as well, so it's, uh, it's just hard to make that move. I like the power, though. So what do you, is this just a street car for you? Do you go to yeah. track days for the... I mean, I've tracked it before. It's a daily driver. Really? Yeah. Is this actually your daily driver? Uh, I, I press it into service a few times a week, a few times a month. So I have, I have a lot of 911s to drive, so I'm always doing flying cars. So finding time to drive my own stuff is difficult. But I try to drive it as often as possible. I feel like this has got the right amount of power. Yeah. It's not super scary, like, it starts to build and you feel like it's about to get real scary, but then it stays there. Right? Yeah. Like, and then it just feels like, oh, we're going fast, but the car's not really going to get away from me. Beautiful. And tight as a drum after 40 years. Yeah. She's got legs, huh? Oh, she's got legs. I think when I was at Chuck Walla with this car, I think I did like 130 or something like that. Yeah. And it, it, just, it, it just climbed right up the ladder. You know? So when you've got, a, when you've got an air-cooled engine with a non-intercooled single turbo attached to it, at what point does that... Oh, come on, let me buy at what point does that system go, I'm too hot, but oh, oh yeah, you can really feel it in the summertime. Yeah. Um, I try not to drive it too much in the summer because it heats so instantly. Really? And it try, you lose 50 to 100, 100 horsepower. Will like, it continue running? Oh, oh yeah. Will it act up or no. will it just stop making the power? In, power it's supposed to in the summertime, this thing will run at 210 all day long oh. at any temperature. Oh. It just doesn't make any power. It okay. does not perform. It can't breathe, you know? Yeah. You, you, you try to compress hot air, and it just doesn't work. Oh, no, this guy's going to drive me nuts. We're going to work. We're, 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 up there, we're going we're to sort that out. Okay. Um, so, can you just, I mean, you drive it out of the boost, you can do it in yeah. the room and it's fine. See, if you don't boost this car, you can feel it just drives nicely. 
well, he's a good driver. You have the technical ability and the means. Why not? It's hot here a lot. Why not just add um, an intercooler? Let's well, see. That's a very easy question to answer. I build my cars within a certain set of circumstances. Uh, I build a box and I, I build my cars inside the box to prove that things can be done, or to be very correct, or to meet certain challenges that I set for myself. And uh, this is one of those. Like I wanted a car that was low key ish. Yeah. Right. It used all original parts. Um, fit under a factory wing. You start putting intercoolers on it, and you put a big box tail on it, and right, like, right, it right. ruins the look of the early Carrera body. Fair enough. You're up a game for yourself. Yeah, I mean, I can do anything I want. Right, so you don't make up a game and then cheat at it. You don't make up a game, you gotta play your game. That's right. And you don't need to Lexus. They say, why don't you just put that Lexus on a dyno until it gets to a million miles? Because you don't make up a game and then cheat. Exactly. Like, this car, there are options. Right, like I could buy an uh, intercooler from a guy, uh, Chris Carroll at TurboCraft. He makes an intercooler that'll fit under his tail. So now that I've done what I need to do with this car, that's a very, a very yeah. real option. Yeah, well, your goal has been achieved. Yeah. But now it's like, okay, I might want to drive quick in August once in a while. Exactly. But I, and another thing is I can, screw up, I can turn up the boost a little bit more. Right now we're running a factory 0.8, you know, 0.8 bar. So it's not it's not a crazy motor. It, it should go 100,000 miles, not abused. Yeah, it's a heavy flywheel. Big boot. Heavy flywheel. But you want the heavy flywheel so the rotating mass doesn't drop the arms between ships. Right, right, right. But again, it's that game you play. Especially with this 915 gearbox where you kind of have to ease it in. You can't really power shift it. Right. I mean, this thing will outrun most things that I come across. You know, get on the freeway yeah. or whatever. Oh, it's a fast car. There's no question. In the, in the grand spectrum of cars, this is a fast car. Oh, good. <laughs> it feels good. Although you mentioned you think one of the plugs might be fouled, I, I'm sensing just a small little yeah. hesitation. Also, the heat on it a little bit too, so it starts to heat soak. Oh yeah, it starts dropping a hole a little bit. Yeah. Um, the heads are twin plugs, so if I put an air cooler on it and change the charge pipe, I can put a twin plug distributor on it and back some timing out of it, make a little more power, you know, and on and on like this. Oh, that looks real good too. You guys get it on, get it on. <laughs> Projects that I do for clients. So right. My stuff, once it's done, it sits. Yeah, yeah. It stays together. I don't mess with prosperity. You know. When you're building something like this, do you have do you do you encounter new problems, or have you seen every problem already? You know, it's not that you see every problem. It's um, there's a formula that works, and you stick to it. Yeah. You know, like it's an it's an eight and a half to one compression motor. It shouldn't be, but it is. Which is why it runs well off boost. You know, this car is tractable without having to spool up the turbo. Oh, I, get, I get this. Keep going. Oh, we gotta end the video. Oh, oh shit. We gotta end the video. That's the next mile. Video. Yeah, exactly. Maybe just, just, just another mile or so. Just that little, I think there's a little hesitation there. Might yeah. get a little tired on this. I really like the feel at the front end. I like how it rides. This is, this is a car that was built by someone not going for their first rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've been doing this a long time. No, I can, you can always tell. You can always tell when someone who's done this a bunch is doing it. It's, it, it's, it just feels way more. All that shit they talk about, Widowmaker and scary and all that. Maybe it, if you're going on the Nurburgring rig for time, maybe. But these cars shouldn't be that scary. They should be fun and confidence inspiring. And when they're set up correctly, they tend to be just that. Yeah. The five speed really helps with this car because yeah. it comes up on boost quick and you're like, it's tractable. Yeah, I drove a 78 stock and I just, I didn't like that four speed at all. Sucker really loves his four speeds though. Yeah. <laughs> Get the brakes on. Get them a little warm. A little bit. It's a beautiful car. Hey, see, before we started this video, I commented on your 380 millimeter steering wheel. I think with my leg, I've got to go into 365. Again, I'm a shorter guy than you, so 
my knees don't interfere. But the lever is on the front end. Yeah, I get it. You see, you can feel how much lighter it makes that front end. Yeah, so I, I talk about this in videos a lot because people use aftermarket wheels. By changing the size of your steering wheel, you can change the impression of the steering wheel by lengthening or shortening your lever arm on the column. Right. And so. The, my favorite one is downsizing the wheel for Corvettes. That uh, really fixes a C5 Corvette steering. Really? Yeah. Um, that's my favorite biggie. Everyone does that. But uh, in this one, you actually got kind of a big wheel with no power steering, and it really helps you. Uh, I'll park this flat so we can let it. And it, uh, it helps you uh, get a little more leverage when you've got no power steering. Wow, Marco. Two for two, buddy. <laughs> so plug the, plug the shop. Uh, plug the shop. Okay, so uh, we have a shop in North Hollywood. Uh, TLG Auto. It's been there since 1978. Uh, second generation, so so we got a pretty good team. Look, we got two two examples of fine driving vehicles built at the shop. I'm glad to know I've got another Porsche Ally in the game. Uh, I don't always have to go to Orange County to get my Porsche parked on. Um, thank you, Marco. That was that was a real treat. Uh, these cars, I do a lot of 911s, but each one is different. And here, and, you know, here we have a period style modified car that is very very cool. You've won the game. Now put it in a cooler. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Bye.